Imagine the ultimate betrayal. Tony's own blood, his protege, working against him. Shocking, right? But hidden clues suggest Christopher Moltisanti may have been playing both sides all along. Could he really have been a rat? Stay with us till the end, because what we uncover about Christopher's true intentions might just change everything you thought you knew about The Sopranos. As the acclaimed series approaches its conclusion, avid fans are tantalized by the emergence of additional characters speculated to be entangled with the FBI. Among the most persistent rumors is the suspicion surrounding Christopher Moltisanti's allegiance. While concrete evidence of Christopher's cooperation with authorities remains elusive, subtle hints suggest the possibility of his betrayal. The FBI's relentless pursuit of Tony Soprano leads them to view Chris as a potential link. This scrutiny intensifies when Chris's girlfriend starts cooperating with the authorities, casting suspicion on him. Chris's revelation of Adriana's dealings further ignites Tony's fears, prompting him to question if Chris is wearing a wire. Despite sacrificing his relationship with Adriana to prove his loyalty to Tony, Christopher finds himself subjected to ridicule and scorn from his fellow mobsters. Meanwhile, figures like Tony Blundetto and Bobby Bacala gain favor with Tony, exacerbating Christopher's struggles with addiction and inner demons. Christopher's sacrifices for the family are met with derision and disrespect from his peers, with Polly even jesting about Christopher's daughter's potential future as a dancer at the Bada Bing. <laughs> You never heard of pulling out? Amidst this turmoil, Christopher undergoes a significant personal transformation, embracing roles as a husband and father, and grappling with the newfound need to protect his family. Like I always say, the man is not complete till he's married. Then he's finished. <laughs> the mystery surrounding the death of Hollywood screenwriter Dolan only deepens, as his demise appears to be linked to organized crime. Christopher's presence at Dolan's apartment, evidenced by his fingerprints, raises suspicions, yet this detail is conveniently overlooked. The hushed nature of Dolan's murder suggests the involvement of clandestine forces, possibly manipulated by the FBI. Could Dolan's death have been intentionally downplayed to use as leverage against Christopher? Was it a strategic move by authorities to pressure him, a valuable target? Reflecting on JT's fate in The Sopranos, one wonders how Tony would react to such a situation. JT's untimely demise could have brought unwanted attention and trouble to the Soprano family, yet Tony remains strangely silent, prompting speculation about his awareness of the event. Chris, you're in the Mafia. Furthermore, Multisanti jests about Sammy the Bull. Gravano's opulent lifestyle facilitated by the Witness Protection Program, attributing it to the government's seemingly endless resources. Gravano was living large down Arizona all on that federal tip. Examining Gravano, as Christopher mentions before his confrontation with J.T. Dolan, amplifies the significance. Gravano, essentially a serial killer with around 19 confirmed murders, received a reduced sentence by cooperating with the FBI against Gotti. In Walk Like a Man, Christopher drunkenly confides in J.T. Dolan about his influence within the Mafia and ponders betrayal. You have any idea if I wanted what I could do to these pricks? Skip's actions in safeguarding informants like Salvatore underscore the FBI's prioritization of assets over adherence to the law despite awareness of criminal behavior. It's evident that Skip Lapari was aware of Sal's involvement in Matthew's massacre, but opted to overlook it, likely aiming to target Tony Soprano. Therefore, the FBI chooses not to pursue Christopher criminally, seeking his collaboration to reach Tony. During the crucial meeting with Tony and Phil, Christopher's demeanor appears oddly detached. His reaction to Tony's scheme suggests a deeper awareness, hinting at a realization that their conversation might be monitored by authorities. Christopher's comment about disclosed monitoring at every landfill seems to confirm suspicions. You know there's close monitoring at every f***ing landfill. Raising doubts about his loyalties and motives. This explains his uncharacteristic willingness to meet Phil's terms to avoid conflict. While some fans speculate that Christopher's docile behavior stems from being high on heroin, it's revealed that he actually had cocaine in his system, a substance known to induce aggression. Despite his disdain for Phil, Christopher would rather confront him than comply, reflecting their tumultuous relationship. Frankly, Tom, I'm thinking maybe we should meet Phil's number. His habit of blasting music at ear-splitting levels while driving could signify wavering loyalty to Tony or feeling coerced into informant duties by the FBI employing tactics akin to Sal's misinformation campaigns to safeguard Tony from wiretaps. But, but 
this system's got no balls. Notably, the soundtrack they favor is from The Departed, a film rich with themes of betrayal and informants. Consider the peculiar incident when Tony discusses Phil and their illicit dealings, and Christopher promptly increases the radio volume in apparent frustration, possibly to obscure wire transmissions. His fixation on eluding drug tests seems odd, given his involvement in illegal activities. However, if sobriety is a condition of his agreement with authorities, Christopher faces a genuine dilemma. Especially noteworthy is Christopher's reluctance to admit drug use to Tony, reminiscent of the severe beating he endured after getting high following Adriana's death. I'll never pass a drug test. His true fear lies in Tony discovering a wire if emergency responders find him in a compromised state. In a previous episode, Christopher informs Polly about a state trooper installing a drop ceiling in his basement, raising eyebrows. Throughout The Sopranos, authorities attempted to bug Tony Soprano's house, succeeding once but thwarted by Meadows' timely intervention. Why didn't they bug Christopher's? His drug use impaired judgment and tendency to ramble made him a prime target. With a family to consider, Christopher ultimately decides to cooperate, weighing the risks and rewards. Could he have been planning a new life in witness protection, writing his memoirs, or pursuing a career in modeling? Share your thoughts on this intriguing theory below. One phone call and it's over. The whole fucking castle comes down. Whoa, like, Subscribe to Vano VHS and hit the notification bell. Meanwhile, check out our video on what really happened to Tony Soprano in the last episode, or find out who's the best boss, capo, soldier, and associate in The Sopranos. Don't miss out.